All right. Did you see that man hit the gong? That's pretty amazing. I bet he can even hit that red plate. <laughs> amazing what you can do with a big heavy rifle and a scope, right? Yeah, Hickok 45 here brought out the old Ward's Western Field. You have allowed me to leave it in the safe for five or six years now. What is wrong with you all? This is one of my favorite rifles and I have not had it out. So I do today, I'm glad you're here because it's a powerful round, you know, 22. Watch this, see that bowling pin? I bet it'll knock it over. Boom, yeah, such power, 22 long rifle. <laughs> Let's shoot something else, like a cowboy. Boom. <laughs> yeah, this is my rifle. Shoot a couple more times. And then I'm going to tell you another story, like, boom. Look at that. How about a bowling pin? <laughs> All right. Sound like a crotch rocket. Man, you never catch me on one of those things. Let's see the coffin if it needs a bullet. Yep, it did. That other red plate needs one, I think. if I hit it. Oh, I just remembered. There's a two liter. Oh, yeah. That orange two liter in front of that plate. Let's see if we can hit it. <laughs> cool. Try that uh, rectangle there. Boom. Nothing like steel. Let's put a couple if we have them on the paper target here. I'm a little bit high. Let's see if I can get it in the red. A little bit too high boom all right nothing like firing at paper at about five or six yards with a scope sided rifle let's put one on the cowboy's hat oh he's already no he didn't i thought he already had a hit there he didn't up route i was going to do something else so i guess i won't yeah you all know i will link to the uh first two videos with this I just wanted to get it out again. This is an again video because it has been five or six years. And uh, if you have seen the first two videos on this rifle, you know how special it is. So I won't uh, go through all that again, but uh, I, will, uh, I will link to both of those videos. This is the first firearm that I fired. Okay, so that takes it back a ways, right? Uh, beautiful firearm. Good old Ward's Western Field 47C. And uh, my dad bought it in the, I don't know, around 1950 from a neighbor, a friend of ours. I remember him shooting it. Uh, I remember him at my granddad's farm. My granddad had 500 acres up in Grant County, Kentucky. And I, I still remember standing there by this fence row and my uncle and then dad and a couple of other people and my uncle uh, another uncle who was a gun nut where I got the, the bug from but they were shooting at a fox I hope it was legal I guess it was a farmer and I know he had a lot of chickens and things like that and they were shooting at a, at a fox across the ridge uh, seemed like a long way trying to hit it I don't think they ever hit it but uh, uh, but anyway I remember them shooting that I was probably like five or six seven years old or something so but yeah this is a gun and my dad gave it to me around I don't know, age 13 12 13 and so it's been mine for a long time and then i restored it as i discussed in the other videos i refinished the stock myself and uh isn't that a pretty piece of wood i mean it's just it's gorgeous i need to keep it oiled down and keep it pretty but it's a beautiful piece of walnut and uh and I'd let paint get it on or something from uh, speckled from rolling a ceiling, I think, or I'd had this in my room uh, when I was younger. In uh, the good old days, I had the gun rack. I showed you that in the first video. The gun rack that was actually in my, my bedroom where I had this. Uh, and I just uh, had it there. And uh, the trigger guard got broken on it somehow. And I, I just gave up on it. Like I'd never find one. It was in uh, kind of bad repair. It just wasn't in good shape. It needed bluing. It needed a scope, a new one. It, uh, the nickeling had gotten off and flaked off and all that. So I did the stock first, and I found the trigger guard. It's a uh, numeric arms. So then I had it re-blued. I had that bolt re-nickeled. The trigger re-nickeled. I'm pretty sure they re-nickeled it as well. 
and uh, put a scope on it and so I got it in really better shape than I ever remember it being growing up <laughs> uh, that's for sure but uh, neat old gun probably made in the 40s maybe yeah late 40s I don't know something like that but uh, just a, a big old heavy gun that is big enough for a 30 out 6 or something really if you wanted to so I'm going to load him up and shoot him some more. Before I do that, I want to remind you again, we also appreciate the support from Atmex, the American Precious Metals Exchange. Those beautiful coins on the table, that little gram of gold, uh, you know, all that stuff came from there. And uh, they uh, have an incredible reputation. And their inventory is almost unlimited. It's like a candy store. You go to that website. Uh, and there's a link in our uh, description, so check them out, please. We appreciate their help. So I'm going to load, not silver bullets today, but, you know, kind of plated, I guess, copper. I don't know. I always think copper plated. I don't know how much copper's in it. Probably not much, right? be too expensive anymore. So 22 long rifle. Boy, I've shot a lot of those through this firearm. Uh, again, I will link to those two videos. If you're really a glutton for punishment, you can go back and check those out. And I, you know, many of you uh, can relate to that. You know, growing up with a 22 rifle, and you know, having it at your disposal, maybe this one or one like this, where you were able to just go out and shoot it and enjoy it. And of course, society and everything has changed a great deal. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just not a big deal at all for me to have this hanging on a gun rack in my, my bedroom when I was like 13, 12 years old. Not a big deal. And to be able to take it out and shoot it. All right. So speaking of that, it's not very loud at all, but I put my ears in. Let's do a little experiment on these two liters while we're here. Why don't, uh, let's see, that green one and that uh, orange one. I'll shoot the green one on the bottom and see what it does. Wee doggies. <laughs> All right, I'll shoot the orange one near the top and then kind of in the neck and see what it does. <laughs> well, they both kind of went crazy for a little bit, didn't they? And I'm going to shoot that bowling pin down there and see what it does. <laughs> bowling for dollars. There's another one. Oh, another two liter. I hit him on the bottom. I hit him on the bottom, and he <laughs> shot up a little bit. Let's do that on these. See if we get him to rock it a little bit. Woo! I'll shoot this one on top. Okay. Maybe it's better to shoot them low. Okay. We're just usually kind of random about it, so we thought we'd do a little scientific experiment uh, here. You know. So you know what? There's another two-liter on the hill over there. I think behind that tree. Yes. I don't know if I can hit it offhand but we'll shoot at it all right pop that baby <laughs> uh, about a red plate all right about another red plate <laughs> how about a gong <laughs> Not one more round. How about a pig? Go hog hunting. Boom! Right in the eye. <laughs> Pretty neat. Yeah, man. Uh, again, as I've pointed out, that's one advantage of the uh, shooting sports is they're kind of lifelong. And, you know, it's just neat to, to be able to, to have the same firearm, too, uh, this long, this many years. So this would be... Uh, the firearm that sets the record for me uh, It's the longest running firearm that I have had access to obviously the first firearm I fired I was like 10 Yeah, 10 uh, out on the farm we lived and uh, My first shots with it had no scope and just had to line up the screw on the end there and I was hooked after firing this and so, and it was the only firearm that we had for a while until uh, Dad got the pistol uh, when I was 10. And uh, 
Yeah, so th this was it. This was this was a gun as far as me, other than what I saw in the movies and what my uncle had. But uh, I have a, how come I'm sweating? Oh, I know, it's hot, that's why. So uh, as I was saying, it's really cool the shooting sports. I was answering somebody in a comment the other day about that, how, how it's not really age related. You know, you can shoot uh, when you're old enough, whatever that might be, and that depends largely on, on your supervision, doesn't it? We're definitely clear. I'll shoot one more time here. Load her up. Uh, you know, I mean, you could be pretty young and uh, under supervision, and then you would be pretty old, right? <laughs> maybe no supervision, maybe you get so old you need supervision, but as long as you can hold the firearm, maybe you just can even rest it on a table and still shoot it. I know there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, wheelchairs that shoot and, and, and everything. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool uh, as far as a, an endeavor because it's not like basketball or football. Like, I don't think I could go play a college basketball game anymore. But uh, I, could, I can shoot all day and I can enjoy a shotgun or a rifle or just whatever. So, and then too, it's especially interesting when you have a firearm like, like this that you grew up with, you still have it and you're still shooting it. So that's kind of something to think about if you're a young person, if, uh, if you've gotten a firearm for Christmas or, or something, a uh, birthday, or, or you just bought it yourself, you're still kind of young. Uh, if it's kind of a special firearm, try to hang on to it okay? and uh, you'll enjoy it 50 years from now just as much. There might be a hog just like that one that you need to plink. <laughs> or a paper target you need to plink. Boom, it got splashed. <laughs> or a cowboy you got to finish off like that one. Have some plates you need to hit. And spread the wealth around. Give everybody some, some lead. <laughs> and uh, well, tell me we ripped already. You know, the thing has always worked. I don't think I've ever had it uh, to a gunsmith other than just the work I had done on it to finish and refinishing and everything. And uh, pretty cool, pretty cool old rifle. As I was saying earlier, it's, it's really uh, <laughs> overly large for a 22 in a lot of ways. This sucker could be chambered in 308. And it would just be, you know, fine like any other rifle to be no uh, excessive recoil or anything because it's got the weight and the heft. You can tell by looking at it. It's just a big old rifle. It's uh, kind of surprising. when you, I see these at gun shows occasionally. They're pretty rare really now. And uh, if you didn't know what you're looking at, I'm sure a lot of people walk by and see it and think it's probably a large centerfire you know, uh, caliber. But... Uh, but they're neat. These were made by Mossberg again, and uh, and Montgomery Ward was like a Sears, you know. And uh, so they made them for Montgomery Ward. They may have made them for Sears as well uh, under a different name, even. So Ward's Western Field, and this is the 47C. Shoot shorts in it, longs or long rifle. So where you're doing the bolt action, you don't you get have problems like the semi-automatics with semi-automatic 22s. They're almost always uh, long rifle only but with uh, the bolt action then you've got more manual control over it and you can uh, feed different length rounds so and we've done that before in videos for you so i just wanted to get it out again i hadn't fired it in a while and thought i'd invite you along big old pretty piece of wood and uh special rifle many of you probably have a special rifle uh or handgun uh, like this yourself and uh if you have one of these, you know, let me know about it because I don't run into many people that actually own them. So uh, it's always fun to get it out. I'm glad you were here to witness it. So what else can I say? Life is good. Oh, hi. Well, I've got you here. I want to let you know about some other places you can find us on the Internet and TalonGunGrips.com. So you can find us on Facebook under Hickok45, on Instagram, the real Hickok45. I also run an Instagram called John underscore Hickok45, Hickok45 on Twitter. There's also Hickok45.com, our website, where you can find 
information about everything that we have going on, basically, all of our supporters. Uh, you can also find our merchandise on BunkerBranding.com, so please check all that out when you have time. And also, please check out TalonGunGrips.com. Uh, we appreciate all of their support in getting attacked by spiders. I don't know if they have any products for that or not, but you can get a lot of different grips for different types of handguns and rifles um, to give you different types of textures that you may want um, that they can really help you uh, grasp the pistol uh, much better. So go to TalonGunGrips.com and check everything out that they have. And as always, read the descriptions in these videos. There's a lot of questions you may have that can be answered by the description and also check out the links that we have down there. I appreciate it. and. Uh, I've got some more uh, shotgunning to do. I'll see you guys later.